Hello and welcome to KnowledgeBank.pro. Today we're going to try to figure out whether we can use correlation plot to improve our storytelling and analysis in Power BI. Let me give you a little bit of a background for this video. Earlier today I was arguing with somebody whether it makes sense for the governor of Illinois to use new cases for coronavirus as a proxy into deciding which areas of Illinois should be locked down. I was arguing that new cases is an important statistic, but the deaths should be ultimately the most important statistic. My opponent said, yes, deaths are important. However, new cases is a leading indicator. And therefore, because it tends to be on the front end of the event, uh, it tends to be more important than deaths. As you may already know, uh, I created a coronavirus dashboard uh, around March time, uh, late March, to track the coronavirus progress. So I went ahead and went into my dashboard, pulled up the numbers for Illinois, and you could see there is kind of a two hump thing going on. We had cases go up, come down, uh, middle of June, end of June, and then the cases have been growing pretty rapidly. The next thing I decided to do was to add deaths to this chart and see if I can glean more insight from that. So here you see the updated chart, you see new cases in blue, you see deaths in red, and you see things that are uh, going a little bit out of control. There's a lot of va variability in our data. Somebody might, might say that this is noise. Things go up and down. We have these peaks and valleys. And uh, generally speaking, it's kind of hard to say what's going on and whether our cases and deaths are related in any way at all. So the first thing you do when you look at noisy data set like this is you try to smooth it out. There are many techniques to take out the noise. One of the common techniques is to introduce a some sort of rolling average calculation. So I've played with a period that made some sense, and here I landed in a 10-day rolling average. So the way this calculation works is we sum up all of the new cases or deaths for the prior 10 days divided by 10. That gives us the average daily number. And uh, as you can see here, a lot of this noise disappeared. Uh, right now we're looking at deaths and new cases for... Uh, the entire country. Uh, if you see that deaths uh, are a little bit higher than new cases, uh, don't be confused because new cases I'm tracking on the left side and deaths I'm tracking on the right side. So you could see that new cases top uh, roughly around 70k here per day and then deaths uh, pick out at about 2000. So even though they seem like um, uh, deaths sometimes are higher than new cases, that's not really the case because of the uh, different axes. Regardless of the axis, we can kind of see now the relationship between the two variables. So here early on, we could see that deaths in new cases rose pretty close, uh, trended very closely to each other. Then deaths continued to go up where cases started to come down. And then there was uh, sometime in July, cases were going up, deaths were going down. So uh, we call that kind of negative correlation. And uh, kind of you can see similar shapes here. But uh, it's very difficult by, to understand by looking at this graph, how closely are these variables related? And that's where the correlation plot comes in. So what is a correlation plot and how do you create a chart? Number one, the way you get the correlation plot is a, it's a R visual that you get from the uh, appstore.com or you can get it from the office, store.office.com. You can also click on the three dots in the visualizations area and then click on get more visuals and pull it in that way. Once you have added the correlation plot to your visuals, what you want to do is you want to create a data set. So in our cases, we will be comparing the, uh, the 10 day average deaths versus 10 day average new cases. But what you want to do is for us to find the correlation, you want to create a bunch of records so that the plot can run the logic, the R logic uh, can take place and um, we can calculate correlation. So what kind of data set did I bring? In my case, I just created a table and I put the date in the rows. And then for every day, I'm outputting deaths and new cases. So now I have a data set where the, the logic can go in, look at all of the, these uh, value pairs and see if there's any correlation when deaths go up, do new cases go up and so forth. Now you do need to have R installed on your laptop or computer before you can get this uh, visual to work. I assume that you can find a way to, to make it happen. If you guys are struggling, let me know. I could do another video to explain how to get our visuals going on your laptop, how to get a client, how to configure everything. Right now it's outside of the scope of this video, but if you guys need help, post it in comments. 
I'm happy to address it in a future video. Now there's a couple of uh, tricks that you could use to make this uh, core plot a little bit more user friendly. The first thing that I do is I go to correlation section of the properties and I uh, look into the matrix shape and I make sure that it's set to upper. This way there's fewer elements here to, for the user to take a look at and it's a little bit less confusing. And uh, actually it's a little bit confusing so let me explain you how it works. So in my, in my case, I want to create a uh, consider correlation between two variables. And what it does, it's going to put the variables in rows and columns. And then where those rows and columns intersect, it's going to calculate the correlation. So here we have a fat one for in the first cell. That's correlation of deaths with deaths. Obviously, uh, this is the same variable. So those two variables are going to be highly correlated. There's always going to, always going to be value of one. And then in the second cell, we're looking at the correlation of deaths with our new cases. So in our case, the correlation is 0.3. It's pretty low. So correlation of one is very high, right? So that means uh, they move exactly the same. Correlation of 0.3 is low. And then when correlation is negative, so you can also have minus one correlation. That means when something goes up by, by 100, then something else is going to, the other variable is going to go up um, basically accordingly. So the swings up in one variable uh, are matched by the swings down in another variable. So the, um, the values here will change between minus one, perfect negative correlation, to plus one, perfect positive correlation. So point three is kind of a low correlation. Now I know somebody sitting and talking to themselves right now, mumbling correlation does not equal causation. We all know that, but still correlation is a useful metric that can help us understand whether the two variables have a tendency to um, to be dependent in some way or at least move in one way. And if this correlation is zero, then probably there's zero causation as well. So as I was trying to figure out if I was correct in my argument, I was taking a look at this correlation for the whole USA and correlation was 0.3. And I was getting a little bit skeptical. Uh, I was thinking that my argument that new cases is very strong because 0.3 correlation is pretty weak. So I was thinking that no, new cases is not a good idea. You really need to be going with deaths. But then I selected Illinois. And for Illinois, the correlation actually is 0.6. That's fairly good, fairly high correlation. And one could, looking at this report, the way it's structured right now, one could say, listen, at 1.6 correlation, maybe you can use new cases as a good leading indicator. Right? So if I don't want to anticipate how many deaths I'm going to have, if my new cases are going up, the correlation is pretty high, it's not unreasonable for me to assume that deaths will follow. And by the way, let's just take a look at some other states and see what kind of correlations we get there. So for Florida, the correlation is 0.7. For Texas, the correlation is 0.8. For California, the correlation is 0.8. For Georgia, the correlation is 0.6. For North Carolina, the correlation is 0.6. For Alabama, of correlation is 0.9. So again, at first, it seems like new cases is an excellent, excellent leading indicator as we're trying to figure out what policies we need to uh, conduct in our corresponding states. But then I had an aha moment. An aha moment was, let's take a look at our data set from beginning of, let's say, July and see if this correlation is uh, still making sense. So after I've changed my time range for the last several months, so now we're starting our analysis from July to September 1st, we can see that our correlation has changed dramatically. Now our correlation is 0.1. Basically that says there is virtually no dependency. Um, I may be using layman terms here, but you guys understand what I'm trying to say. Basically new cases and deaths d d do not show a whole lot of relations relationship in between those two variables. And um, so now the case for new cases, uh, no pun intended, uh, becoming a little bit weaker, right? So for example, at point one correlation, it doesn't seem like new cases is a very good predictor of deaths. Let's take a look what happens with Florida. Wow, with Florida, there's actually a negative correlation. So basically, the more new cases, the fewer deaths. That's how you can interpret that number. Texas, zero correlation. California, 0.2, little. Georgia, 0.1. North Carolina, again, negative correlation. Alabama, 0.8, excellent correlation, very high. And you can see that these two charts follow each other very closely. And then let's take a look what's happening 
in my favorite state of Illinois. Wow. In Illinois, we have a completely crazy negative correlation. Basically, it says that we're go if we're going to be looking at new cases to try to predict deaths, we're going to come up with a completely crazy ne uh, wrong number, right? Basically, this says that new cases do not predict deaths at all. When trace cases are trending up, deaths are trending down. So hopefully you are starting to understand how uh, the correlation plot could be useful as we're trying to understand whether the two drivers that we're trying to use in our modeling are acting the way we expect them to act. So in my case, I'm looking at coronavirus data set. In your case, you could be looking at things like, for example, marketing investment and sales. The expected behavior should be the more I spend on my investment, the higher sales are up getting at the tail's end. So you would have those two variables to be if everything is working well, if your marketing department is working well, then increase in investment should be followed by an, a corresponding increase in, in sales. And I'm sure you can come up with a bunch of other different scenarios where this correlation plot could be very helpful to validate the assumptions that you're making as you're adjusting your drivers and trying to analyze whether your drivers are driving the desired outcomes. So that's about it for today. Hopefully I, uh, made a good case for using the correlation plot in your dashboards, particularly with people who are trying to get into the nitty gritty of things and try to start thinking about um, how the two different drivers are affecting each other. Thank you for stopping by and I hope to see you back soon.